What is up, Waffle Gang? I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more r slash am I the butthole. <laughs> if you'd like to skip the initial waffle, timestamps are in the description and along the timeline below, so please feel free to use them. But if you are new here, please consider hitting that like, that subscribe, and maybe that notification bell too, as it all massively helps out our channel. It truly does. And I just want to thank a couple of new members from yesterday. I'd like to thank Dawn over on Patreon, and I would like to thank Erica Jacobson. Thank you so much for your support and for everyone for spending 20 minutes or so out of your day is absolutely incredible level support. So thank you so, so much. And let's crack on with today's stories. Much love, guys. Now, this first story comes from Starship456. Am I the asshole for calling out my neighbor who tried to take home all of my neighbor's chicken tikka masala at the beginning of our potluck? I'm gonna say no. No one takes my chicken tikka. Last weekend, I invited my neighbors over for a potluck slash pool party. Nothing big, just the neighbors in my cul-de-sac. Everyone has kids around the same age, so it was a good time for everyone. There is this Indian couple that lives near us. Call them Pooja and Jim. Now Pooja's cooking is incredible and she brought over some samosas and chicken tikka masala. Samosas as the appetizer and chicken tikka for lunch. Now we have this other neighbor, call her Lindsay. Lindsay loves Pooja's cooking. When it came to the samosas, her and her husband really went to town on them. It was a bit rude in my opinion, filling up your plate with them. Not everyone got to have some. I didn't say anything, but this is what got annoying when I opened up the food for lunch. Lindsay first takes a big plate of food. Then five minutes later, she says she and her family have to go home and that she's gonna take some food back with her. I was like, sure. Then the entire aluminum tray of chicken tikka that people are still taking food from, she tries to take. I was like, okay, this is a bit too much. I was like, hey, Lindsay, people are still eating food right now. I'll have my son bring you guys over after people are done. She then gets mad saying that she brought a big tray of muffins. She didn't even bake these, they're from Costco, and that she has taken her fair share. It got really weird. It was like she got super territorial of the food and says that I am targeting her. My wife steps in and is like, no, we just wanna make sure that the food is for everyone. She then starts angry crying, puts the food back and says we humiliated her and that we only did this because she is a fat girl. Pooja and Jim step in and they're like, no, no, it's okay, you can take the food. We can make some more, it's no worries. And if we are low on food, we will just order pizza. Lindsay leaves and her children leave shortly after. I didn't wanna humiliate Lindsay, I just wanted to ensure there was enough food for everyone. And it's just rude leaving a party early and then taking a lot of food with you. Pooja tells me that I shouldn't have said anything, that she is actually flattered that Lindsay likes my food that much. Now, I've got to be honest straight away, I've never been to many potlucks myself. I don't, I'm not sure if it's a massive thing in the UK or not, but I, I've often heard it in these stories before, so I'm, I'm assuming it's bigger in the US, and I, I've always heard that it's like quite big in, in southern US. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Always happy to be educated, you know that. But if I was in that position, you know, if I went to a, one of these potlucks, there's no way, unless people like insisting, take the food home, it needs to go, I wouldn't take the food. There's no way I could bring myself to do that. It's just, it doesn't seem like the right thing to do. And I'm, as I said, I might be totally wrong here because I've never been to one of these potlucks before. But while this like party or potluck is still going on, I, d I don't think I could go there and, and take the whole tray as well and say, right, <laughs> this is mine, I am off. And if I was one of the guests as well, I'd be very unhappy as a massive chicken tikka masala fan myself to see that disappear would be a huge disappointment. And I don't think I can call you the arsehole in this situation for, for confronting this. I think it was just the fair thing to do because, you know, there was a lot of people there wanting to eat food and probably wanting to eat Pooja's cooking as well. And I think maybe Pooja was probably feeling sorry for this person, is probably a very empathetic person, was feeling bad for that person. Maybe they was feeling some secondhand embarrassment as well. But I don't think you're the arsehole in this situation to me. But I'd be very interested to know what everyone else thinks on this one because obviously I haven't been to many of these before, so... <laughs> And we'll start off with Chairman can 93 saying, not the asshole, amazed that she went to crying when she knew she was in the wrong. Just because you bring a tray to a potluck doesn't mean you're allowed to leave and take another tray without consent. And username 52 says, not the asshole. Lindsay was acting super entitled and I'm sure that everyone else thought so and was happy for you calling her out. It sounds like she showed up just to take food. Pooh just seemed really sweet, but I don't like her response. People at the party like the food, and I'd be kind of upset if someone took the good food and I ended up with pizza instead. Also, who would pay for the pizza? 
And Lara says, not the arsehole. I'm glad Pooja is gracious, but I'd fight someone if they tried to abscond with a good chicken tikka masala before everyone got some too. <laughs> And Bob the driver says, not the arsehole, if Lindsay was a decent person, her response would have been, oh, sorry, I didn't realize. Instead, she makes a huge scene and, and cries big blubbery, better let me have my way or I'll ruin everything, tears. That's jerk behavior. I'd never invite her over again. And one more from Mr. Demcheek saying, not the arsehole, who goes to a potluck expecting to take food home? Being able to enjoy food everyone else brought is the fair share of food you get from a potluck. Also, the distribution of leftovers is usually left to the host slash whoever brought the dish. You really just said aloud what everyone was probably already thinking. Wow. I think it's pretty much a resounding not the arsehole there, but I'd be interested to know if you have a differing opinion. And let's move on to the next story. And our next story comes from, am I the arsehole stolen toiletries? Am I the arsehole for putting all my hair, makeup, and skincare products into lockboxes? I, female 17, been babysitting these kids. Five females, six female, and eight male. Every day for almost a year. I'm not sure what their mum does, but she works with a lot of high-end hair, makeup, and skincare companies and gets a lot of free stuff. She sometimes comes home with bags of products and tells me to take whatever I want. Needless to say, I have a decently sized collection of high-end products that I used to have on display on my vanity. My sisters, 5, 6, 11, 13, 14, and 18, <laughs> have a habit of breaking into my stuff, especially my makeup, but also things like my shampoo and conditioner. My boss gets me nice ones at a discount, perfumes, lotions, etc., because I use nicer things than them. I told them to stop taking my stuff, but they wouldn't because sisters share. So one of my brothers, 24, came over and helped me put shelves in my closet, and I bought lockboxes for all my stuff. My sisters are mad at me because they can't use my stuff anymore. And my mum and stepdad want me to let them use my stuff to keep the peace. My brother is on my side and he's offering to let me move in with him and his girlfriend and their son. Six months. And I'm considering it, but I wanted to know if I was the asshole. Now we occasionally see these stories come along where the parents say, oh, give your sibling this to keep the peace. And no, you don't have to keep the peace for anyone. That's your stuff. They're taking your stuff. Absolutely, you don't have to hand it over. And your mum and dad are totally in the wrong for trying to make you do this and need to teach your six other sisters some boundaries. I mean, come on. One of them's 18, man. One of them's older than you. <laughs> but that house seems like chaos to me. And I think, hmm, I would be considering moving in with the brother too. I mean, just to get a bit of peace and quiet, I think. <laughs> But Malice says, I'm not the asshole. You have six sisters and you are supposed to share all your stuff with them. Nope. I have a sister and we never shared makeup slash skincare or shampoo and conditioner. And Callout says, not the asshole. Your parents seem to like making kids, but not parenting them at all. Take your brother's offer and move out. And Quirky says, not the asshole. Explain to the older sisters that you have to work for these items, that they can work too to buy similar items. For the little sisters, you could maybe save some of the empty bottles and fill them up with water or cheap lotion so they can pretend. The expensive stuff usually has pretty packaging. I doubt the five-year-old really cares about how expensive her shampoo is. An off-kilter pendulum says, not the asshole. Also, there's hygiene reasons to not share makeup, which makes you even more justified. And one more from Potentially Knox, which is just follows the pattern in the comments as well, which says, not the asshole, move in with your brother. And there's many more of those comments as well. So I think we just move on from there to the next story. <laughs> and this next story is from Spank Moose. Am I the asshole? Father is homeless. I refuse to bail him out. Good evening, am I the asshole? Reddit. I'm in the midst of a moral crisis and I turn to you all for outside judgment. Some background, growing up my father was a night security guard and never made more than 10 an hour. He has had cars repossessed, didn't pay rent, almost costing us our homes growing up. A chronic liar and a stolen money from family. His brothers, myself and my siblings. When my mother worked up the courage to leave him, he had an abusive streak, he fell apart. Since then, my father for the last 10 or so years been what is essentially an employed homeless man. He bounces from job to job, never staying anywhere or at any job for too long, maybe a year or so, before moving on to the next great idea. On more than a few occasions, this lifestyle of his has led to him winding up penniless and jobless, and he in turn comes to his kids for money. I have more than one occasion sent him money, bought bus tickets, or paid for him to fly from out of the country back to the US to start over. He at one point lived in my living room back in 2013. 
and this brings me to the current day. He called me the other day to tell me he was jobless and homeless in the US Virgin Islands and needs money. His brother, my uncle, had told me this call was coming because he gave him money a week or so before. My sister did the same. So I told him no, I wouldn't give him any money, but I'd fly him back to the States. He just had to tell me where. He asked me to come to my home. Having done this before, I knew it meant I'd have to kick my dad out again and simply told him that it was impossible. My wife is pregnant and my work schedule keeps me away. So I pay for him to fly to St. Louis, where we are originally from. This starts a fight with my wife and siblings who say he's taken advantage of me because he knows I won't say no to him. I told him this was the last time I'd help him and any other requests of money and needing help would result in me cutting off all contact with him. I cannot shake that I am abandoning him. Despite all the lies, his abuse and proof that he won't change, he is my dad and I'm consciously deciding to leave him to whatever outcome his decisions lead him to. So am I the arsehole? If I'm not, why do I feel like one? Now this is a tough one because it's one of these ones where you want to say you're the arsehole but it's from a standpoint of you know you need to stop doing this to yourself because this person OP has empathy for their father and I totally get that because you know in these reddit posts we're so easy to say like cut family off to just get rid of family and it's, it's never that easy is it come on now. Obviously in some situations it's a bit easier, but in these situations where OP still has, clearly has love for their, for their father, even though they're doing all this stuff, they still have a lot of love for them. And the father is clearly taking advantage of the family financially and emotionally. And you know, it's not fair. And in an ideal world, you know, I would like to say if someone was doing that to me, I would cut them off. But I just don't know either. I think OP is totally right not taking them into the family home where the wife and child is because you're at work all the time and you know it's the, that's the responsible thing to do. And from one of your last paragraphs there saying where you can't shake that I'm abandoning him despite all the lies, abuse and proof that he won't change and you're consciously deciding to leave him and you're almost sort of like saying that you're letting him down but it's quite the opposite way around he's let you down all this time that's your father someone that should be looking out for your best interests and you know family do struggle sometimes but he's continuously doing it and following a pattern and he's not going to change so it's a bit of a struggle but i just says you're the asshole not for cutting them off but for wasting money that should go to your wife and baby on this loser he chose to have a kid this does not put you in debt to him Time to put your family first. And Drummer says, not the arsehole. This is a really tough situation, but you don't owe him anything. He is toxic and abusive. It would be a different story if he has actually changed as a person, but he hasn't. And you did what now says, kindly, you're the arsehole to yourself, wife and child. Your dad isn't going to change. The only thing that can change is how you respond to him. You can love him and not support him financially. His family have funded his adventures because he can't slash won't hold down a job. Ask yourself, do you want your child to experience their granddad this way? Will your child become part of his family finance system? You aren't letting your dad down. He's letting you down. And Delusion says you're the arsehole. You and your family need to quit enabling this guy to keep living off you and your charity. He will never become responsible for his own actions because he knows he can keep coming back to you guys all the time and you keep bailing him out. If I was married to you, I'd be angry you keep paying to fly him back to the States too, time after time, because it's ridiculous you keep falling for his crap. The man is a loser and he needs to hit rock bottom and dig himself out of his own hole for a change. And again, there's just a lot of comments between you're the asshole, mainly sort of like for doing this to themselves and more not the asshole comments, you know, because it is, it's a tough situation to be in. But let's move on to the next story. And our next story is from Logic Sal. Am I the arsehole for questioning my brother's new girlfriend's surrogate family? My brother and I have always been really close. Our parents are both doctors, so we spent more time together growing up than most siblings probably did. He had a string of really bad relationships and toxic girlfriends, with the most recent ending in March of last year. After which, he told us he was going to take time away from relationships and focus on finishing university. For clarification, he's 22, I'm 24. Only about five months later, he told us he was seeing someone new. He wanted to wait a while before introducing her to see if it was the right fit, and so we didn't meet her until last weekend. He told us very little about her, only that she is Norwegian and came to where we're from as an international student and studied politics. 
As I do with every girl my brother tells me about, I decided to do a social media stalk before she came to meet us. Oh no. There was very little to find and she seemed like a nice girl. But I noticed there was little about her family. But there was a post on her Facebook timeline from a gay couple who called her their surrogate daughter and had posted a lengthy post about how proud they were when she graduated university. Well, she came over on Saturday night and she just seemed too perfect. For my brother at least. So I decided to ask her some more difficult questions to see how she would react. She was really talkative until I mentioned her family and why she decided to leave Norway. So I decided to ask her about what I'd seen on her Facebook. She seemed weirded out that I'd looked but told me that the couple were basically her family. One of them was an advisor for international students during her first year and had offered her a lot of support. And because his husband is a local politician, offered to arrange a meeting for them so she knew she had someone to go to for help. She basically said she just became really close to them and truly considers them her family. I found this weird and thought there must be some kind of legal thing with the fact he was in a position of power at her university. When I mentioned this to her, she got defensive and asked why it mattered considering it had been over three years and she no longer attended university anymore. I said it didn't, but that she should be wary of the fact that she's clearly being taken advantage of. My brother intervened at this point and told me to stop talking. They left pretty much right after we finished dinner. On Sunday, I got a call from my brother telling me that I'd really upset his girlfriend and he demanded that I apologize to her. He explained a little about her family background to me, which to me, after hearing it, just makes me think she's being taken advantage of even more. But I apologize to her. My brother has said he wants some time away from me and is still angry with me for upsetting her. But I apologize and don't think I said anything that warrants that kind of response. Am I the asshole? It kind of became creepy as soon as you said you stalked. You always stalk your, your brother's girlfriends on Facebook. I mean, it's, it's a bit odd, <laughs> I gotta say. But the way you came up with a random narrative about her her background as well it is very, very strange. The way you, you came up with a little story and it, you made it in the worst way possible. Of course, they're going to find you a bit of a creep for that. So you're going to be the arsehole in this situation just because of that, really. But Active Berry says, so you stalked a girl online because she seemed too good for your brother. Found something totally innocent. Oh no, she has an older gay couple as friends. Framed it in the most sinister way possible. Confronted her about it the first time you met. Refused to let it drop and are now confused why your brother is upset with you. Obviously, you're the arsehole. How could you possibly think this was okay? And one Mike Nation says, you're the asshole. You took one line off her social media and made a whole story in your head and then got upset that she didn't agree with that you're right. Not surprised your brother wants space away from you. And Blorpod says, you're the asshole. You took your brother's poor relationship history out on this one person after you cyber stalked her by interrogating her about details of her life that she was obviously not comfortable discussing at her first meeting. I'd go further to say that your brother betrayed her trust by telling you anything about her family at all. This was not your business. Your brother is an adult, even if he is younger than you, and gets to make his own decisions, even if you don't trust him to do so. For probably the first time in your life, shut up and mind your own business. If you want an ongoing relationship with your brother and not strained by your insufferable behavior. And again, on this one, just many, you're the arsehole comments saying, look, you need to mind your own business and stop the cyber stalking stuff. It's not on. But yes, let's check out the next one. And this story is from Little Jemmy. Am I the arsehole for picking up a glass with a sanitary napkin? My 16 female family was eating dinner last night. Everything was nice and normal until my mum's 52 female glass was pulled off the table as she was folding up her placemat, sending shards of glass everywhere. The biggest shards were easy enough to get, just pick them up from the floor and we could use a dustpan for most of the rest. But there was a bunch of little glass splinters left over. They wouldn't go into the dustpan and try picking them up without dexterity of non-gloved hands was impossible. Until I got an idea. I went into my mum's room, got a sanitary pad and used the adhesive side to pick up the splinters. It worked wonderfully and after going over the spot with a wet paper towel, everything was all cleaned up. Except for my mum's attitude. She told me that it was low-key gross, saying it was akin to me bringing out a condom and using it as a baggie. Now I admit, I let my temper get the best of me and told her it wasn't like she had a better idea other than getting our hands all messed up. She was pissed, said her usual, well, someone's having a bad day today and stormed off. My dad thought it was smart, if weird to use a pad, but now I'm thinking that, yeah, it might have been gross to bring that out in front of the whole family. I know I'm a bit of an asshole for snapping back at my mum, but I'm just wondering, am I the asshole for using a sanitary napkin to clean up glass shards in front of my family? 
Edit for everyone saying tape. I'm probably gonna go with that next time. Unfortunately, we didn't have anything bigger than scotch tape at the moment. Info, it was not used. <laughs> if it was, then I understand how that would be disgusting, but thank you for all the visual of someone taking their used pen out and cleaning the glass with it. It made me laugh more than I care to admit. Now I'm gonna dive straight in with a not the arsehole in this one. I think that's a great idea. If you haven't got tape on hand, <laughs> use a pad, you know, it's just something that could use and it's not gonna go through as well. I mean, come on, it was just creating thinking. It's just a bloody pad, man. <laughs> The stigma around it, man, it's just absolutely crazy. Everybody avert your eyes, there's a pad in the room. <laughs> Come on. But we're gonna start with Mountain Goat saying, not the arsehole, you're not the arsehole, you're a genius. Well done. And C may reply to this saying, OP demonstrated a remarkable ability to think outside the box. She identified a problem and found a solution. Her solution was unconventional, but ingenious. Bravo, OP. And Laura Ann 78 says, not the arsehole, it's a great idea if you didn't have tape handy. It's not like you grabbed a used one. There is way too much stigma around menstrual products. And Neat's Leak says, not the arsehole, I'm pretty sure your mother at 52 has seen a sanitary napkin before. They're sterile and seemingly the perfect tool for the job. There's nothing inherently gross about an unused pad, just like there's nothing inherently gross about a clean pair of underwear. And again, in this one, just lots of people saying, not the arsehole, there's nothing wrong with it. <laughs> As it wasn't a used one, of course. OP's not a monster, come on now. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for being here today for today's stories. I hope you did enjoy them. And if you did, don't forget to leave your verdicts down below if you choose to do so, or your comments around the stories. It really helps out the channel as well, really helps out with just basically everything. And don't forget to click that like as well, because again, that's very, very helpful. Once again, guys, thank you so much for your love, support, and time. And if you want to support the channel further, you absolutely can, but never any pressure to do so by clicking that join button down below for YouTube or clicking the link in the description for Patreon and join up there. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Take care, guys. Much love. Boxes are defeating. Purpose always fleeting. I poise questions to the ceiling like an answer gonna come. Truth is too revealing. Life is easier concealing. All emotions to the start on your heart going numb. I shouldn't be in drive more. I just wanna feel alive more. I feel hurt all the time, boy. I can't see straight. I've been 